January 12. Jacob sends gifts to Esau. As Jacob started on his way again, angels of God came to meet him. When Jacob saw them, he exclaimed, This is God's camp! So he named the place Mahanaim. Jacob sends gifts to Esau. Then Jacob sent messengers ahead to his brother Esau, who is living in the region of Seir in the land of Edom. He told them, Give this message to my master Esau. Humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Until now I have been living with Uncle Laban, and now I own cattle, donkeys, flocks of sheep and goats, and many servants, both men and women. I have sent these messengers to inform my Lord of my coming, hoping that you will be friendly to me. After delivering the message, the messengers returned to Jacob and reported, We met your brother Esau, and he is already on his way to meet you with an army of four hundred men. Jacob was terrified at the news. He divided his household, along with the flocks and herds and camels, into two groups. He thought, If Esau meets one group and attacks it, perhaps the other group can escape. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my grandfather Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, you told me, Return to your own land and to your relatives, and you promised me, I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owned nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps. O Lord, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to attack me, along with my wives and children. But you promised me I will surely treat you kindly, and I will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the seashore, too many to count. Jacob stayed where he was for the night. Then he selected these gifts from his possessions to present to his brother Esau. Two hundred female goats, twenty male goats, two hundred ewes, twenty rams, thirty female camels with their young, forty cows, ten bulls, twenty female donkeys, and ten male donkeys. He divided these animals into herds and assigned each to different servants. Then he told his servants, Go ahead of me with the animals, but keep some distance between the herds. He gave these instructions to the men leading the first group. When my brother Esau meets you, he will ask, Whose servants are you? Where are you going? Who owns these animals? You must reply, They belong to your servant Jacob, but they are a gift for his master Esau. Look, he is coming right behind us. Jacob gave the same instructions to the second and third herdsmen and to all who followed behind the herds. You must say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. And be sure to say, look, your servant Jacob is right behind us. Jacob thought, I will try to appease him by sending gifts ahead of me. When I see him in person, perhaps he will be friendly to me. So the gifts were sent on ahead while Jacob himself spent that night in the camp. Jacob wrestles with God. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives his two servant wives, and his eleven sons, and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? the man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. Jacob and Esau make peace. 
Then Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and his two servant wives. He put the servant wives and their children at the front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then Jacob went on ahead. As he approached his brother, he bowed to the ground seven times before him. Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they both wept. Then Esau looked at the women and children and asked, Who are these people with you? These are the children God has graciously given to me, your servant, Jacob replied. Then the servant wives came forward with their children and bowed before him. Next came Leah with her children, and they bowed before him. Finally, Joseph and Rachel came forward and bowed before him. And what were all the flocks and herds I met as I came? Esau asked. Jacob replied, They are a gift, my lord, to ensure your friendship. My brother, I have plenty, Esau answered. Keep what you have for yourself. But Jacob insisted, No, if I have found favor with you, please accept this gift from me. And what a relief to see your friendly smile. It is like seeing the face of God. Please take this gift I have brought you. For God has been very gracious to me. I have more than enough. And because Jacob insisted, Esau finally accepted the gift. Well, Esau said, Let's be going. I will lead the way. But Jacob replied, You can see, my lord, that some of the children are very young, and the flocks and herds have their young too. If they are driven too hard, even for one day, all the animals could die. Please, my lord, go ahead of your servant. We will follow slowly at a pace that is comfortable for the livestock and the children. I will meet you at Seir. All right, Esau said, but at least let me assign some of my men to guide and protect you. Jacob responded, That's not necessary. It's enough that you've received me warmly, my lord. So Esau turned around and started back to Seir that same day. Jacob, on the other hand, traveled on to Succoth. There he built himself a house and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place was named Succoth, which means shelters. Later, having traveled all the way from Paden Aram, Jacob arrived safely at the town of Shechem in the land of Canaan. There he set up camp outside the town. Jacob bought the plot of land where he camped from the family of Hamer, the father of Shechem, for one hundred pieces of silver. And there he built an altar and named it El Elohi Israel. Revenge Against Shechem One day Dinah, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local prince Shechem, son of Hamer the Hivite, saw Dinah, he seized her and raped her. But then he fell in love with her, and he tried to win her affection with tender words. He said to his father Hamer, Get me this young girl. I want to marry her. Soon Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah. But since his sons were out in the fields herding his livestock, he said nothing until they returned. Hamer Shechem's father came to discuss the matter with Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the field as soon as they heard what had happened. They were shocked and furious that their sister had been raped. Shechem had done a disgraceful thing against Jacob's family, something that should never be done. Hamer tried to speak with Jacob and his sons. My son Shechem is truly in love with your daughter, he said. Please let him marry her. In fact, let's arrange other marriages, too. You give us your daughters for our sons, and we will give you our daughters for your sons. And you may live among us. The land is open to you. Settle here and trade with us, and feel free to buy property in the area. Then Shechem himself spoke to Dinah's father and brothers. Please be kind to me and let me marry her, he begged. I will give you whatever you ask. No matter what dowry or gift you demand, I will gladly pay it. Just give me the girl as my wife. But since Shechem had defiled their sister Dinah, Jacob's sons responded deceitfully to Shechem and his father Hamer. They said to them, We couldn't possibly allow this, because you're not circumcised. It would be a disgrace for our sister to marry a man like you. But Here is a solution. If every man among you will be circumcised like we are, then we will give you our daughters and we'll take your daughters for ourselves. We will live among you and become one people. But if you don't agree to be circumcised, we will take her and be on our way. 
Hamer and his son Shechem agreed to their proposal. Shechem wasted no time in acting on this request, for he wanted Jacob's daughter desperately. Shechem was a highly respected member of his family, and he went with his father Hamer to present this proposal to the leaders at the town gate. These men are our friends, they said. Let's invite them to live here among us and trade freely. Look, the land is large enough to hold them. We can take their daughters as wives and let them marry ours. But they will consider staying here and becoming one people with us only if all of our men are circumcised, just as they are. But if we do this, all their livestock and possessions will eventually be ours. Come, let's agree to their terms and let them settle here among us. So all the men in the town council agreed with Hamer and Shechem, and every male in the town was circumcised. But three days later, when their wounds were still sore, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, who were Dinah's full brothers, took their swords and entered the town without opposition. Then they slaughtered every male there, including Hamer and his son Shechem. They killed them with their swords, then took Dinah from Shechem's house and returned to their camp. Meanwhile, the rest of Jacob's sons arrived. Finding the men slaughtered, they plundered the town because their sister had been defiled there. They seized all the flocks and herds and donkeys, everything they could lay their hands on, both inside the town and outside in the fields. They looted all their wealth and plundered their houses. They also took all their little children and wives and led them away as captives. Afterward, Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have ruined me. You've made me stink among all the people of this land, among all the Canaanites and Perizzites. We are so few that they will join forces and crush us. I will be ruined and my entire household will be wiped out. But why should we let him treat our sister like a prostitute? They retorted angrily. Jacob's Return to Bethel Then God said to Jacob, Get ready and move to Bethel and settle there. Build an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob told everyone in his household, Get rid of all your pagan idols, purify yourselves, and put on clean clothing. We are now going to Bethel, where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all their pagan idols and earrings, and he buried them under the great tree near Shechem. As they set out, a terror from God spread over the people in all the towns of that area, so no one attacked Jacob's family. Eventually, Jacob and his household arrived at Luz, also called Bethel in Canaan. Jacob built an altar there and named the place El Bethel, which means God of Bethel, because God had appeared to him there when he was fleeing from his brother Esau. Soon after this, Rebekah's old nurse Deborah died. She was buried beneath the oak tree in the valley below Bethel. Ever since, the tree has been called Elan Bakuth, which means Oak of Weeping. Now that Jacob had returned from Paden Aram, God appeared to him again at Bethel. God blessed him, saying, Your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. From now on, your name will be Israel. So God renamed him Israel. Then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants, and I will give you the land I once gave to Abraham and Isaac. Yes, I will give it to you and your descendants after you. Then God went up from the place where he had spoken to Jacob. Jacob set up a stone pillar to mark the place where God had spoken to him. Then he poured wine over it as an offering to God and anointed the pillar with olive oil. And Jacob named the place Bethel, which means house of God, because God had spoken to him there. The Death of Rachel Leaving Bethel, Jacob and his clan moved on toward Ephrath. But Rachel went into labor while they were still some distance away. Her labor pains were intense. After a very hard delivery, the midwife finally exclaimed, Don't be afraid, you have another son. Rachel was about to die, but with her last breath, she named the baby Benoni, which means son of my sorrow. The baby's father, however, called him Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. Jacob set up a stone monument over Rachel's grave, 
and it can be seen there to this day. Then Jacob traveled on and camped beyond Migdal Eder. While he was living there, Reuben had intercourse with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Jacob soon heard about it. These are the names of the twelve sons of Jacob. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servant, were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, were Gad and Asher. These are the names of the sons who were born to Jacob at Paden Aram. So Jacob returned to his father Isaac in Mamre, which is near Kiriath Arba, now called Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had both lived as foreigners.